G'day, this is Brian Midway from Crossland Christian Network and uh, Grace Canberra. And I'm um, wanting to talk in this little video clip, uh, skills training about discipleship multiplication, to talk about uh, a part of the Discovery Bible Study uh, process. Now, Discovery Bible Study is about um, uh, looking to the Scriptures to, um, to make connection with God. Um, that's what they're there for. Um, uh, Jesus said... John 5, 39, he said, you know, you search the scriptures because you think that in them is eternal life when these are the very ones that point to me and you won't come to me to have life. And so you can see that Jesus was uh, demonstrating to them that the scriptures were meant to point, they're meant to be a signpost to somewhere. And and um, so our little uh, method, this simple reproducible way of helping people to connect with God uh, through the scriptures is called Discovery Bible Study. And uh, in this, we uh, we you know we've we've done these things already. Uh, read, read. Each person reads. They read the thing a number of times. If you've got three people in the group, you read it three times, or you know whatever. Just just to, to get it to become familiar with the whole story. You choose a story, uh, uh, like a, a passage that that makes a story. Uh, then then you simply uh, one by one tell the story in your own words, while everybody else coaches you. To be able to tell the story correctly, and that process is just simply to uh, familiarise you with all of the information that makes up the story. Um, then, then from the story we get the message that the the story carries message, a revelatory message from heaven that we can uh, take to our own lives, and then we pray about that, and then we um, we work out an action plan based on obedience to this message, and then. Finally, we figure out who we're going to tell about what we've discovered. And so that's the whole method. But I want to talk today about um, about uh, uh, just the questions that you ask in order to discover the message and and then figure out how to implement this message in your own life. Uh, and so um, this, the questions, the question part of this is read, read, tell and check. Then you come to the message and application that, that involves asking a number of questions. You can figure out your own questions. You, you can think of ones that are better than this, and you're quite welcome to do that. Uh, but uh, the, the, the first thing to say is, what is the message of the whole, the whole piece? Not just a word, not just a verse, not a phrase, the whole story. This, you pick a piece that has a story. It's actually been written like that as a story, an incident, a teaching, a theme, a subject. And so you look at that whole subject and then you you figure out what the, the message is um, based on the whole of that portion, not just you know, bringing meaning to it from somewhere else. And so what is the message that this story carries? And then when you ask that question and you come up with an answer, then you go back and look at the story again to see whether your idea of the message fits with the whole of the story or is it just something that's been brought from somewhere else and only relates to a part of it because of a familiar word or whatever else. Um, the, the, the second question has to do with um, implementation. We've heard of revelation space and fulfillment space. Moses at the burning bush, Moses in Egypt. Um, Moses at the burning bush got the revelation. Moses in Egypt fulfilled or began to fulfill the revelation. So um, what would this look like if it was happening in my life? And what do I need to do? Well, I mean, you think about Moses. What was it? You know, God said, go and get my people out of there and take them to there. Well, okay. Then what, is, what would this look like if it was fulfilled in my life? Oh, I need to go to Egypt. Oh, I need to take my family. Oh, so off he went. And he did that in obedience to the word. So what would this message look like if it was happening in fully in my life? And what should I do in order to embrace what God has said? And then the third uh, part of it is, you know, who can I tell about what I've discovered? This is just a, uh, a way of simply saying, you know, freely you've received, freely give, and a way of talking about it, so articulating what you've discovered. Um, so then let's just talk about the message. Um, whoops, let's go back. Let's go back, previous. Um, what is the message? Um, now, I want to make a suggestion here, and it isn't you know, the law here, it's just my own observation. Most of the stories of Scripture have what I would call a kingdom of God tipping point. Now, tipping point is a term taken from 
Malcolm Gladwell's book, The Tipping Point, and it talks about when the momentum of something takes over. The first one is work, work, work hard, hard. You come to the tipping point, and then it rolls down the hill by its own momentum. It's created its own momentum. And so something comes as a as a rush. Now, if you think about the stories, um, uh, say, um, well, let me, let me get to this. Um, a, a point at which the kingdom of God is being known. Or another way to put this, the... The story, the story starts out as an ordinary human story. The point at which that story becomes a God story, that's what I call the kingdom of God tipping point. That's the point where we see how the kingdom of God comes and how the will of God is done on the earth as it is in heaven. And so, so we ask the question, we go through the story. I wonder if I've got it written here. Um, no, no, I haven't got it there. Blow. I'm sorry. Go back to previous. Um, so um, let me give you an example, uh, the example I gave before, um, the story of the prodigal son. The tipping point is where the father, we realize that the father's been looking for the son ever since he was gone. He sees the son coming before the son sees him. That's, that's revealing the attitude of God. What about the woman uh, caught in adultery? The point at which the kingdom of God comes is when Jesus says, who among you has got no sin? Let him be the one to cast the first stone. And then he says, go and sin no more to the woman. That's the kingdom of God. That's where the kingdom of God invades that situation. And this woman, instead of being stoned, uh, gets forgiven. And um, that's the tipping point. The tipping point for a woman who came into a meal room where Jesus was eating with the Pharisees and the church leaders, uh, and he just let her go on and let her go on. Everyone's disgusted this woman who's a you know bad reputation, whatever you know. And Jesus lets her go on. And then when they question him, he honors her and challenges them. That's the kingdom of God coming to that place. And so when you look at this story, look for the kingdom of God tipping point, and there you'll find the message. That's my theory. You can be the tester of it. So then the next question is, what would I? What would this look like if it was happening in my life? Here I'm reading about something that's happening in Jesus' life or something that's happening in the Bible, but it's, it's here for a reason. It's here so I can become someone different, so I can receive power from heaven, so I can know what God wants. And so when we see that, then we've got to say, what would this look like if it was in my life? Oh, I'd, this, I'd be this and I'd be that. This would be different and that would be different. So what do I need to do? in order to obey what God has said in faith so that this story, which I'm reading about, which is there, it's coming in my eyes, it's going around in my brain, getting to my heart. Now I'm going to go do something and then I become different. I become a version of that story in my own lifetime, in my own situation. Um, what should I need to do? Then you know, that, that's what you commit to. And the important thing is about this is not to move on to another story until you've got some experience of this story. Because we've got a church full of people who've listened to so many stories that they've never implemented. And I'm as much as anyone else, you know, involved in that. So um, so you just need to be, I, you know, the way to disciple, multiplying disciples is to actually, if somebody doesn't get the hang of it, well, then go back over it and ask again, try again until they get some uh, something of that working in their lives that way. That way, we'll be doing what Jesus said in the Great Commission, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded. Because obedience leads to the experience where we we become our own version of that story. And then who can I tell? That's just to be able to say, hey, listen, I just read this in the Bible. It doesn't need to be, it doesn't necessarily need to be a non-Christian person or whatever. Just tell somebody that's in your world. Tell them immediately. Get into the practice of telling people, share it. Because... Whenever you bring some revelation thing, something that you've discovered, and you share it with somebody else, you immediately begin to recognize the presence of God where you are, rather than just a human thing going on. Really special. Uh, so keep focused on the goal. The goal here is simplicity. That is, this has to be easy to access for anybody. I've done these, this kind of Bible study with people who don't know God, and, and God has still touched their lives. Implement, implementability, that is, the, we're going to read something and get a message, not about some ethereal thing that nobody's going to know about, but about something practical. Is it able to be implemented? Whatever you, whatever the message is, it's got to be 
able to be implemented. And so we've got to keep it focused on that. And of course, the last thing is it's got to be reproducible. What I'm teaching you, what I'm, I'm training, what I'm equipping you in, you need to be able to take that to somebody else immediately. And remember, the test of this is not whether we get blessed. It's whether somebody else gets blessed because we've discovered something. That's the deal. So, as they say in The Princess Bride, have fun storming the castle with Discovery Bible Study.